Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day 17 of the Halloween Craft Countdown 2021. Today we are making tote bags and these are extra special because the heat transfer vinyl I've used to make the little skeletons on the cat and the dog glows in the dark. This is going to be so much fun to take out when those nights grow darker and you can see all of the glowing patterns when the sun goes down. Let's find out how to make it. To get the free cat and dog skeleton SVGs, go to craftwithsarah.com or check the link in the description of this video which will take you straight to the download page. I've already uploaded the SVG so I can click into upload and then they're appearing under my recently uploaded images. I can just click both of those and then go insert images to put them onto my canvas. If you're not sure how to upload SVG files to Cricut Design Space, again, check the description of this video and I'll add some links to tutorials in there on how to do that. Now for my tote bag, I'm going to use the dog and the cat image, but of course you could use them separately if you'd prefer to just have one or the other. I want my cat to be a little bit smaller than the dog. That's probably a bit too small. So I'm going to roughly put that into the size that I want. Next, I need to measure the tote bag. Here's the tote bag I'm going to use. It's this lovely bright orange colour, which is perfect for Halloween. I got this on Amazon, so I'll drop a link in the description if you want to get the exact one. But kind of any tote bag um, that is a material that you can iron on that will get hot is um, going to be just fine. Or you could use a t-shirt or a hoodie or any type of um, clothing really. So I'm going to measure this. Got my ruler here. Now you just need to kind of work out how big you want to make the design. So I reckon for mine, I'm going to go for about eight and a half inches in width, which would be that. I don't want to get too close to the edges or the top or the bottom because when you've got things in the bag it will push the material out and I don't want to have to stretch the vinyl too much when the bag material is all stretching outwards. So I think eight and a half will just kind of fit nicely in that middle and will be a good number to choose for this particular bag. Now I know the size of the design that I want to put on the tote bag, I can start resizing this in design space. First, I want to change it so that the cat and the dog are perfectly lined up along the bottom. I just think it'll look a little bit neater. To do that, press select all in the top and then go into align, align bottom. And that was pretty close anyway, it only changed a little bit. But now it is perfectly lined up along that bottom line. Now that we've still got both these layers selected, we can change the width. So in this width box, we're gonna type the size that we want the final design to be. Make sure the padlock icon is closed and that means when we type the height, 8.5, and press enter, the height will change in proportion to. I'll zoom in a bit with these buttons at the bottom, just so you can still see the designs nice and clearly. Now if I was to click make it now, it's not going to remember the positioning of the cat and the dog. You can see that cat is now right up at the top and it's done the same thing on that colour too. You could cut it like this and then manually position it on your tote bag or wherever it is that you're putting the designs. But I find it's easier to tell Design Space exactly how we want the cat and the dog to be positioned so it will cut it exactly right. So let's cancel out of here and then in order to kind of tell Design Space how we want this cut, we're going to need to ungroup the layers. To do that, click on one of the images, I've done the dog first, and then at the top of the layers panel, press ungroup. Do the same thing with the cat, so click on it, and then ungroup. This has separated out all of the layers, which means we can now choose layers of the same color and attach them together. So I'm gonna click the skeleton cat first, press shift on my keyboard and then choose the layer of the dog skeleton and then down the bottom press attach. Do the same thing for the black layers, so the dog, press shift, choose the cat and press attach. This has moved these layers to the top so to fix that go into arrange and center back. 
Now I'm not going to attach the two hearts together because these are very small images and if I was to attach them it means I'm going to waste all of the vinyl that goes in the middle of them and I don't want to do that because you know the glow in the dark vinyl is a little bit on the pricier side and I just don't want to waste it basically. <laughs> but I want to show you what this has done. So now when I click make it the cat and the dog are perfectly aligned along the bottom, so it's going to be much easier to get these aligned on my tote bag. For the hearts, I am going to pull them apart a little bit, because what you'll have to do is, once they're cut out and weeded, you'll need to cut down the clear plastic backing on the heat transfer vinyl to separate the two pieces so that we can put one on the cat and one on the dog. And by increasing the gap between them, it just makes it a little bit easier to get your scissors in there. All right, so this is all ready to be cut out. So let's see how to cut glow in the dark heat transfer vinyl on a Cricut machine. The glow in the dark vinyl that I'm using is from gmcrafts.co.uk, which is a UK based vinyl shop. And you can get this glow in the dark vinyl from other manufacturers and other websites. So if you're not in the UK, then you'll probably need to find a different supplier for them. But it is quite readily available. Now it comes in all of these different colours, so we've got a pink, green, orange, yellow and blue and they all wonderfully glow in the dark when the lights turn out. This is heat transfer vinyl so we are going to need to press it onto the tote bag. You can get adhesive glow in the dark vinyl too. I'm not sure if it comes in all the different colours um, but I know there definitely is some out there on the market. For my little tote bag, I'm going to use the green vinyl for the bones in the skeletons and then the pink for the hearts in the middle. So let's cut it out and see what it looks like. When your vinyl has arrived, make sure you check out the instructions on how to cut it because it may vary based on different manufacturers. For this one from GM Crafts, we need to mirror our design when we cut it. And then when we put the vinyl on the mat, it will go coloured side down. So your Cricut will cut this kind of white colour on the background and then we'll weed it. And then when you press it onto your um, tote bag, you'll turn it around like this so everything will be the right way. And that is how we press it. This particular vinyl is a 15 second press time. Again, make sure you check your particular brand because it will vary. Here's the glow in the dark vinyl cut out and I just wanted to show you how beautifully this comes off once it's cut. So I already started it a little bit but now I'm on to the bit I haven't done yet and you can see this is just peeling back so easily and it is perfectly cut. So this was done on the everyday iron-on setting with default pressure and it is just coming off absolutely perfectly. Look at it. So it's quite a big piece. I'm just going to go in a bit closer. But this is probably the easiest vinyl that I've ever pulled off. So just making sure that all of my little tail pieces are still in there, which it is. And there, super easy. Now I just need to go and get my weeding tool and go through some of the smaller pieces that are still left. I also think it helps that I'm weeding on the mat because it means you've got that nice stable bottom. I'm just trying to be careful not to touch the sticky parts of the mat with my fingers because I don't want any oil or anything from my fingers to get on the mat as that could affect the stickiness. Just going and taking out these eyes. And then the doggy's got a little nose on him. And then these tiny little pieces in his head. And this is a bit trickier just because they're so small. Let me just scratch them out. There we go. Make sure that you pick up those tiny pieces and don't just leave them where they could get on the transfer tape because, not transfer tape, the backing, you know what I mean. Um, because if they are still on there, then it means you'll have that little dot transfer onto your 
tote bag or t-shirt or wherever you're putting these. So I'm just going to make sure I get them. I've got one more little tiny bit in that face. I think. Or are there any two that side? No, there's only two that side. Okay, awesome. All right, so now it's ready for me to go and cut out the hearts to go in the middle, and then we can get it all transferred over onto the tote bag. Go down first and line it up where you want it to go, and then cover it with a Teflon sheet. I'm just going to tack it down for a couple of seconds to get this to stick, and then I'll add the other layers on top. So I'm just counting in my head to five seconds before I lift it up. It's really important you add that Teflon sheet. I didn't the first time I tried this and my design actually stuck to the top of my heat press. And as it was the first time I'd ever used the heat press, it kind of made me panic, but luckily I managed to fix it. So I've just warm peeled the top off of that heat transfer vinyl. And I really, really should be wearing heat proof gloves at this point. So when you do this, please wear gloves. It was silly of me not to, but I didn't actually have any at this point as I didn't realize they were a thing. But um, when I did some research, I found that yes, they do exist and I should absolutely be wearing them. So now I've just lined that glow in the dark vinyl up and then I have got the uh, Teflon sheet back in place. I've set this to 150 degrees, which was what the manufacturer recommended for my glow in the dark vinyl. But yours might be different, so make sure you check with your manufacturer before you start pressing. So now I'm lifting it up and swinging it out the way as I do have a swing away heat press. This is an eight in one heat press I got on Amazon. I'll drop the link in the description. It's a warm peel, so I'm peeling this off. It was actually a little bit hot at this point. I actually probably should have left it a little bit to cool down, but I was impatient. Next, I'm adding the glow in the dark hearts. So I've cut the backing plastic down quite small on these. So um, they'll fit nicely, but I left a little bit at the bottom of each, so I've got something easy to grab to pull off. So here's my Teflon sheet again, and now I'm going to press it for a little bit longer. I don't want to um, overpress the other layers though, so I'm kind of a bit conscious about that. This heat press does have a timer function, so I could be using that, but as it's such a short press time for this vinyl, only 15 seconds at full length, I thought I could just time that in my head, and it worked out pretty well. So let's take off the Teflon sheet, and then see if this has all stuck. So I'm just peeling off, and there's one. Why I should be wearing gloves, and also why I should wait a little bit for it to cool down. I'm actually just turning off my heat press at this point and unplugging it because I don't want to leave it on any longer than I need to as it does get really hot and also as this is a swing away press it was heating up the top of my cabinets. Since I made this video I have bought a heat proof surface to go underneath it so it won't have that same problem in the future. My bag's all done now, here it is, look how beautifully that pressed, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video on how you can use glow in the dark heat transfer vinyl to make these super spooky skeletons for Halloween. The free SVG for both the cat and the dog are available in the description of this video or to get all the free SVGs from the whole of the Halloween craft countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Halloween 2021. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again tomorrow for another fun Halloween craft. Bye!